as i see it <coughs> sociology and sociologists will have two major tasks one i will call the scientific task the other is an ideological task uh, following one of uh, the leading indian sociologists i would say us scientists sociologists should ask and answer four questions relating to the phenomenon of ethnicity what are these questions first what is it second how is it third why is it and fourth what will it be the answer to the first two questions are expected to provide a description including the historicity of the phenomenon of cultural globalization of ethnification and all the rest how what is cultural globalization how did it come about what is its history in a way i was trying to do it when i was talking about the conceptual history of globalization precisely that <coughs> the third question why is it is an attempt to provide an explanation of the phenomenon what after all how do we explain the phenomenon of cultural globalization i started by talking about uh, 16th century geographical exploration followed by colonialism followed by cold war all this meant directly and indirectly movement of the people from one part of the world to another and now we have reached a situation and we have talked about it through modern technology particularly internet we can also exchange ideas quite instantly and quickly this means cultural globalization can be explained by sociologists in such a manner and in that we have to to to, to identify the importance of uh, some factors as against some other factors and and finally the fourth question what will it be is predicted in its orientation by answering this question sociologists should be in a position to indicate the future trends and tendencies of cultural globalization now these are one set of questions what i called the scientific task of sociologists now answering scientific questions are necessary but not sufficient it's here that a fifth question will come and that question is what it ought to be it is prescriptive and normative and hence i call it ideological in orientation the task in the context should be adhered addressed to three objects the task in this context should be addressed to three objects first oppose cultural homogenization the world has witnessed political and economic hegemonization and consequently cultural subordination during the colonial and cold war era but given the increasing saliency of equality this is no more admissible and hence the need for opposing cultural hegemony second to resist the temptation of cultural relativism as you know cultural relativism is the tendency to believe that one's culture is superior to that of others culture and therefore it should be maintained in its pristine purity confronted by cultural hegemonization the smaller and weaker cultures may fall into this trap therefore it is necessary to reject the idea of cultural relativism no culture is pure and no culture can really be maintained in its 
Christian impurity. If cultural hegemonization is to be resisted, and if cultural relativism is to be rejected, what is the mechanism of coping with the situation? This is the third ideological task that I am assigning to sociologists. That is, nurturing cultural pluralism. By which I mean dignified coexistence of all cultural groups in the same polity. Cultural diversity or heterogeneity is a social fact. And cultural pluralism is an attitude, is a value orientation to this fact. Now my position is, to be different is not to be inferior or superior. It is this recognition which should prompt sociologists to be advocates of cultural pluralism. So, as you see it, that uh, I am trying to say that sociology and sociologists have two divergent tasks. One is a scientific task in understanding the phenomenon called cultural globalization in all its ramifications. The other is an ideological task so that the tyranny of cultural hegemonization and the project of cultural homogenization is resisted with all our might so that what we really have is uh, real humanism.